Good. All right. Good morning, Brother Chris Hannon, Grace Baptist Church, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Uh, minutes off I-95, exit 102. So if you're in the area, we'd be uh, uh, more than uh, grateful to have you. Be our honored guest. Uh, have known a brother and sister in Christ visiting us would be a great honor. So if you're in that area, uh, you come by and visit us. We'd be glad to have you. Uh, we're going to be in John chapter 16 this morning, the discourse, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, but it's regarding, I just kind of tired of, tired of the message, when the, when the Holy Ghost speaks. When the Holy Ghost speaks. All those people say Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, same. Um, but there's a lot, of, a lot of conjecture, there's a lot of uh, mis, misinformation about the Spirit of God and everything else. Uh, most people associate, you know, Spirit of God with somebody jumping around. Um, a lot of charismatics associated with speaking in tongues, uh, visions, revelations, things of this nature. Uh, but the Bible is really clear, uh, surprisingly, when people read it on uh, the, what the Spirit of Christ, Spirit of God will do, especially in regard to salvation. Uh, that's what I want to look at this morning. I want to look at when the Holy Ghost speaks. Uh, again, a lot is said about the, it's the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Uh, a lot of things being done in churches attributed to it. But just because someone said it was the Spirit of God does not mean it was the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, we're told, now, you don't have to turn there, Brother Richard, but we're told in the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, that there's another Spirit and there's another, uh, there's another Jesus and another Spirit and another Gospel that a false apostles preach. And the way you know the difference between that which is true and that which is false is you know what the Bible says. And too many people, uh, uh, too many, it's a sad thing, but too many professing Christians don't know what the scriptures have to say about the Spirit of God. All they know is what a, t a teacher, a preacher, or a commentary has told them, and they haven't actually read what the Spirit of God says. And so, um, but we find here in this discord, uh, uh, well, uh, also, the Bible also says in 1 John, you don't have to turn there, but 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 5, it says this. It says, try the spirits, whether they be of God, for many false prophets are gone unto the world. Amen? And so we got a lot of falsehoods, and the way you try them, once again, is by the Word of God. See, the Word of God is the standard. Amen? Yes. That King James Bible, it's the standard. Yes. Not your feelings, uh, not your experiences, not your uh, traditions, the Word of God. That's true. John 17, 17, the Bible says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Amen? Amen. And so he's called the spirit of truth. And I'll show you that in just a second. He's called the spirit of truth. And so you have no right to say it was the spirit of God when you don't have it backed up by scripture. Amen? Amen. Your, feelings are not the, your feelings are not the standard. Your experiences are not the standard. The standard is does your, feel, does your experience match up with what the word of God says? And if your, spirit does not your experience does not match up with what the word of God, guess, guess which one's wrong? I'm not going to deny you experienced something, but to say that that was the Spirit of God when it doesn't match up with the Word of God, see, I'm going to go with the Word of God. Amen? And so let me read down here verses 7. Uh, we we'll read John 16, verses 7 through uh, 15. Verse 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient. Now, this is Jesus talking. He says, It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. He's telling you what's he going to do. He's, he's outlining what he's going to do. He says, And when he has come, verse 8, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Breaking it further down. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of judgment. Uh, of righteousness rather because I go to my father you see me no more a uh, judgment because the prince of this world is judged I have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now how be it when he uh, the spirit of truth there you see he's called the spirit of truth right there the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things uh, to come he shall he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine he shall show uh, he shall show uh, it unto you all things that the father are my, uh, all, that the father hath are mine therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you all right and so Jesus Christ right there gives this brief discourse on what the Spirit of God will do amen right I mean right there now let me say this uh, a lot of people wrote written all, written all kind of books and everything else but you know what uh, I, I believe the Bible is the best commentary on what the Spirit of God is going to do. 
Amen? Amen. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the best commentator on, on telling us what it's going to do. Amen? Uh, once again, I'm, I'm going to believe Jesus over uh, individuals' experiences and what they say they saw and everything else. Uh, and so I want you to notice some things right there in our text. He said, verse number one, uh, uh, verse 13, uh, notice what he says in verse 13. He says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you in all truth, for he shall not speak of who? Right there it says he shall not speak of himself. Y'all know what I notice about a lot of charismatic, a lot of pe Pentecostal stuff? The first thing that's out of their mouth is the Holy Ghost said. You ever notice that? And they attribute a whole lot of stuff to the Spirit of God. It said he will not speak of himself. Is that right? Right there. That's, this is Jesus talking. He said he will not speak of himself. Now, no, so uh, uh, he said, uh, n n number two, he says, uh, notice, he will not glorify himself. Look at verse 14. He shall glorify me. Do y'all see that? No. Who's me? That's Jesus Christ. Is that right? He will glorify me for he shall receive a mind and show it. Again, a lot of glory and praise goes to the Holy Ghost. Instead of going, he said, he shall glorify me. Let me tell you, no, it's like us as Christians. Y'all know what we're supposed to do? What? We're not supposed to glorify ourselves. We're supposed to glorify Him. Amen. Amen. He gives us the gifts. He gives us all these things. But in all that giving, we're never supposed to take the glory. We're supposed to reflect the glory and say, all the glory belongs to Him. Amen. There's, the Bible talks about there's one glory of the sun and the glory of the moon. But y'all know where the glory of y'all know where the, the moon gets its glory from? From the sun. Amen. Amen. And so notice. He says, number one, verse 13 says, he will not speak of himself. He will not glorify himself. He'll glorify Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Uh, 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 verse uh, number three, I notice in verse 15, he will not show you of himself. Look at verse 15. All things that the Father have a mind, therefore said that he shall take a mind and show it unto you. Notice, the things of Jesus Christ, amen. Too many times, uh, again, they'll attribute all this stuff to the Spirit of God, uh, again, when it should be attributed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, let me tell you something. We've got people praying to the Spirit now. I've heard some people say, oh, Holy Spirit. No, let me tell you, Jesus Christ said, ask in my name. Amen. Amen. He said, ask in my name. Specifically, he says that. And so we got a lot of stuff that's going around in churches uh, being attributed to the Spirit of God. Now, this is not to uh, downplay the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God. Uh, we got Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Is that right? But he is the third person. He's not the second person. Amen. Right? There's some people, I know that this is on video, but there's some people here. Some of them are awake. Some of, some of, them, some of them are awake. Some of them are trying to hang in there. Uh, but I want you to know, uh, things, those are things he said he's not going to do. He will not speak of himself. He will not glorify himself. And he will not show you some things, that, the things that the Spirit of God, they are Jesus Christ. So there's, no, there's some no things that are different his that are not in Christ. Things he will do. Verse 13 again. Look what it says, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into what? All truth. You know what that is? That's spiritual. Spiritual truth. You know where you find spiritual truth? In the truth of the word of God. So his, when you're guided, he will be guiding you in the word of God. Yep. Amen? Amen? It won't be somebody else's special revelation, some special vision. John 17, 17 again, sanctify them truth by truth. Thy word is truth. Again, he's called the spirit of truth. He's not called the spirit of your dream or experience. He's called the spirit of truth. Y'all know we have the word of God. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the what? Holy Ghost. Notice, he will guide you in the truth. Look at verse 13. He was speaking the truth. Uh, verse 13, how be it when he has come, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you in all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall, he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Notice, he will speak of truth. Again, the truth will be found within the word of God. See, this is what gets me. We got all these people talking about the spirit of God, right? And he says this, or he told me this, but he's deviating from the word of God. And the Spirit of God is the author of the Word of God. So why would the Spirit of God, which is the author for, of the Word of God, deviate from the Word of God? That's not the Spirit of God then. 
Uh, you're not in the habit of deviating from your own statements. Why would the Spirit of God do that? That's why the Bible says try the spirits, whether they be of God. How do we try? We try them through the Word of God, which is the truth. Amen? When Jesus Christ and the devil, when he tempted the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ didn't tell him about no experience. And you know what he said? He gave him the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And then the last thing is this right here. This, things, this is things he will do. He'll guide you in the truth, verse 13. He'll speak in the truth, verse 14. And he'll glorify the truth. Look at verse 14. He'll glorify the truth. Verse 14 says, She shall glorify me, for I shall, re shall receive a mind and show it Last thing I checked, you know what Jesus Christ said? He's the truth. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's what he said. He is, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by to so be guiding you to according to the tic, dictates of who Jesus Christ is and what he did for us. Amen. Amen. All this other bunch of stuff. See, there's enough, right? Y'all see what I'm talking about? There's enough right here in Scripture to outline what the Spirit of God does not, will not do and what he will do. You got all this stuff of conjecture and people claiming that the Spirit of God said do this or do this, say this, and it deviates from the truth, then friend, that is not the truth. So today I want to look at the work of the Spirit of God in salvation. Jesus Christ said this in John chapter 6 verse 44. He says, no man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Y'all know what the work of the Spirit of God does? Again, look what he said. Come back here. Look what he says. In John chapter uh, uh, 16 uh, verse uh, 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 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is speeding for you if I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of what? Sins. Sins. So the first thing, you know what he'll do? First thing he's going to do is he's going to bring conviction to the sinner. Amen. Amen. He said he's going to reprove. You know what reprove means? It means to blame. <laughs> It means to blame. It means to censure. It means to charge with a fault. A uh, uh, fault uh, to the face. It means to chide. It means to convince of a fault or to make, uh, make it manifest. It means to incite a sense of guilt. That's what it says. That's, a, that's, what, that's what my Bible says. When Jesus said when he's come, he will reprove the world. Amen. That's why this business, uh, yeah, I got to go to church. Let me tell you, you got a bunch of people living all kind of different kind of ways and partying in the club on uh, 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 Saturday night and then they say, I got to go to church Sunday morning and get my, I got to get my praise on. Yeah. Friend, I, I, I don't know about you, but the Spirit of God I see in the Bible said, what you're going to get is reproved. Amen. He's going he's gonna to reprove you. And so when I look at that, I mean, I see conviction. He's going to show you your condition before the Lord. Amen. Amen. See, we got a way we think we look how we look, but there's a way when God looks at us that's different. Amen. Amen. See, God sees us as we really are. You know, we can dress up, we can put on the makeup and act a certain way and everything else, but God sees us 24-7. Amen. Amen. See, the best actors are not in Hollywood. The best actors are in Sunday morning church. Yeah. Yes, sir. Ain't nobody smoking, cussing, fussing, fighting in here. Everybody behaving themselves, amen, when they go to church. But when they get out of church, it's some kind of way they got there where we lock God up in the church and he can't get out inside and see our dirt. See, he's going he to show you your condition before God. Watch this. Here's your condition before God. Go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 and look at verse uh, uh, 10. Romans chapter 3 and verse 10. Romans 3, 10. He said he's going to reprove. That means he's going to bring that conviction. Romans 3, 10. That's what, you know what? Now, some people got sins. Y'all know why some folk are going to go to church? Because they know that's what's going to happen. Amen. Y'all, but we invite, hey, we invite, <coughs> invite, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Water going down the wrong pipe. <coughs> we invite people to church all the time. <clears throat> this I'm doing my <clears throat> Patrick Mahomes um, uh, imitation. <laughs> we invite folks to church all the time. There's a lot of people. Y'all know why they don't want to come. They won't come because you know what? They know if they get under the sound of the word of God, it's going to bring them to a place of conviction. 
They don't want to hear that. Amen. They, they know they've been living wrong. They know they're not right. They know. And you say, come on, man. You'll, yeah, it'll be good for you and everything else. And they know it, it, it may be good for me, <clears throat> but you know, it's like going to the doctor. I know I need to go, but I don't want to go. Sometimes it's, I don't want to go because I hope whatever this is passes and I don't really want to find out what it is. Amen. Same thing when people come to church. They know the Spirit of God is going to reprove them. You might not know them. You might see them as your neighbor, as your friend, as your co-worker. They're a good guy and everything else. They know that the Spirit of God is going to reprove them. And you, by the way, that's his job. Amen? That's, right. that's his job. He's going to reprove them. And, and I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not the FBI. I don't need, all, I don't need the, the, the background and all this kind of stuff. All we need is the Spirit of God. Amen? Because some people have, have accused of uh, somebody invited them to church. They told you about them. You know something about it. Friend, I ain't got time for all that. Let me tell you something. That's the job of the Spirit of God. Amen. And you know what? He does a really good job at it. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 3. Look at He says here. Romans chapter 3 verse 10. Uh, he says, uh, verse 10, he says, uh, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is, uh, mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction, misery in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Amen. This is what God says. This is how he sees it. Amen. This is what the Spirit of God will reprove you of right there. He'll show you this is how God sees it. That will bring you under place of conviction. Uh, go, watch this. Go, if you will, to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 20. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20. See, it's not my job. It's not the preacher's job to bring you to a place of conviction. Amen? I'm just supposed to preach the gospel. And part of preaching the gospel is telling the sinner, you know what, that he needs to repent. Amen? Romans, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 20. Ecclesiastes 7, 20 says, For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Do you see that? That Bible clearly says in Romans, you don't have to turn it, but it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. And you know what? I, people don't, I don't need to spend an hour on that and everything else. You know what? All I need to do is this right here, tell you what the Bible says about it. And let me tell you something. A sinner will get under conviction because the Spirit of God will make sure he does. Amen. That's his job. It ain't his job to make a sinner come to the church and jump all over and jump all up and down and everything else. All the, it's the Spirit of God, first of all, deal with him about his sin before God. Amen. Reprove him. Look at go to this. Go to First John chapter one and verse eight. First John, not Saint John. First John one eight. That's his job. And let me tell you something. You know what? People making church uh, so palatable and everything else, and they say, "Well, that's a turn off." And so we, we won't say some negative things and everything else. Let me tell you something, friend. You're not doing what the, the Bible tells you to do, so the Spirit of God can do a work in people's heart. Amen. I needed, let me tell you something, when I got born again, before, before I got born again, I needed the Spirit of God to reprove me. Amen. Amen. I needed Him to show me, you know what, what it looks like before God. I, let me tell you something, in my sight, you know what, I was, I was good. I was good to go. Right? You know what I was doing? I, I, I was uh, uh, gauging my righteousness by other people's unrighteousness. Right? I said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good compared to them, amen. But let me tell you something, when I get in my Bible, when I see what God's standard of righteousness, you know what I see? I say, uh-oh. First John chapter 1, look at this. First John uh, chapter 1 and verse 8, look at this. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and here it is, the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? And so, the Spirit of God, will, He shows you your condition before God. Do you know what else He shows you? He shows you your condemnation before God. He shows you uh, 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 there's, there's a way that seemeth right before men, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That's what Proverbs 22, 16, 22 says. Uh, he shows you that rebellion and resistance and res uh, resentment and rejection, you know what? He says the wages of sin is death. The Bible says this is the condemnation. John chapter 3, if you turn there. John chapter 3. 
He shows you your condemnation. Not only will he brings you under conviction, John chapter 3, he shows you your condemnation. John chapter 3. Look at this, John chapter 3. Uh, John chapter 3, verse, uh, let me get, so we can get a, John chapter 3, verse, Yeah, we'll go to verse 16, since it's so well known. John 3, 16, that's where we start. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not a Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed on the name of the Son of God. And this is the condemnation. I told you, this is with the Spirit of God. He'll show you your condemnation. See, let me tell you, before I come to church, y'all know what I see? I see all smiles. Amen. I see all smiles. I see people looking at me, nodding their head. Right? But see, I don't know who's under conviction. And I don't, I don't know who the Spirit of God is showing their own condemnation. To me, everybody good to go. He says, uh, uh, he, he, uh, Verse, uh, verse, verse 19, and this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. See, he will show you your condemnation. Again, a lot of people think it's the preacher. No, 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 I don't, you know what? I don't spend a lot of time with that. The Spirit of God will show you your condition before God if you're lost, and he'll show you your condemnation before God. That's what he'll do. And he'll show you this right here. Go to first first Corinthians chapter six and verse nine. You know what he'll show you? First Corinthians chapter six. Now, it's amazing. You know what? All I'm doing is using the Word of God. Amen? That's all I'm showing you. And this is what the Spirit of God... See, there's a whole lot of... All this other bunch of stuff is just foolishness. There's enough in the Word of God so we can see what the Spirit of God will do. He'll show you your condition. He'll show you your condemnation. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, look at verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abuse themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor uh, extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Do you see that? That's where the Spirit of God, He will show you that. He know it, and if you're guilty of that, one of those, one or more, you will be under conviction. Yep. Amen. That's not my job. He will do it to you. A lot of people are mad at the preacher. I'm just, you know, I'm just a vessel speaking, amen. The Spirit of God is the one that brings you, makes you feel bad. And under the condemnation of God, amen. amen. Yes, sir. See, he said it. First of all, he will bring you to a place of, uh, uh, of. now come back to John, uh, uh, John chapter 16. Look at this. John 16. Look at verse 13, John 16, 13. Look at this. He'll reprove you. All those verses, uh, uh, verses, uh, uh, verses 8, all the way down to verse uh, um, 11, are those, you know what, that's what he'll reprove you about. Verse 13, you know what happened? See, here, here's this now. The Spirit of God will convict you, but you know who's in charge of converting you? The Spirit of God. Amen. It, it's not mama, it's not papa, it's not your friend, it's your husband or wife. It is the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ said this right here. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you must be what? Born again. It's a spiritual operation. As much as the Spirit of God will convict you, the Spirit of God will convert you. Amen. Yes, sir. How do y'all know that? Look what he says here. Uh, again, uh, verse 13, he says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, uh, he will guide you in all truth, for he shall uh, not speak of himself, uh, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You know what Jesus Christ said? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free, amen? 
He will guide you in the truth that God has written so you can be free of your sin. He'll show you, verse 13, verse 14, verse 15. He kept saying, he'll show you. You know what the Spirit of God will show you? He'll show you in the Word of God the things that Christ did for you so your sins will be forgiven. Amen. He'll guide you. Amen. All I do every week, you know what I'm doing? I'm just opening the pages of the Bible, right? And I'm just like a guide as we all walk through the Scriptures. Amen. But the Spirit of God is the one who illuminates these things so we can see it as we need to see it. He'll show this right here. Uh, he'll show you how Christ was bruised for you, sinner, under, uh, uh, under condemnation. He'll show you how Christ bled for you as a sinner, under condemnation. He'll show you how Christ was buried uh, for you. He'll show you how Christ rose again for you. Amen. Uh, uh, the Holy Ghost will show you Christ through the Scriptures. The Holy Ghost will show you Christ crucified. Amen. That's what he will do. We will look through the scriptures and he'll show you that this is what this, this is what Christ did for you. Amen. We just read down John 3:16. What? That God so loved the world that he gave what? His only begotten son. That whosoever believeth should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Your sin is going to condemn you. That's perishing. But Christ came and died for your sin. Amen. That's life. That's what he'll show you. Let me tell you something. He won't be so all this business of people jumping all around and acting crazy and flipping and do, rolling around on the floor and everything else. Friend, when I look at the Bible, I, that, those are the people who are possessed with devils. Amen. Amen. When I look at my Bible, I see those individuals possessed with devils. I seen a man, the maniac of Gadara, after Jesus Christ got done with him, uh, that man was seated, clothed, uh, and in his right mind. Amen. Before that, he was running around with no clothes on and no man could chain and nobody wanted to walk that way. Dwelling among the tombs. We got this thing so messed up that people flip it out in church, put the, the tongues out of all this kind of stuff. They're talking about that's the Spirit of God. It ain't the Spirit of God. It's the devil. Speaking, jumping up in church. I said, I said, I love up all this kind of stuff out in the middle. Women. Especially women when the Bible says that one's supposed to be silent in the church. Amen and amen. amen. I say it for y'all. Amen. See, the Spirit of God will bleed you in the scripture so you can see the conversion that's found in Jesus Christ. Uh, watch this. Go to... Uh, 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 again, watch the Spirit of Christ, Spirit of God in this. Go to John 3, where we was at just a little second ago. John 3. And John 3, look at verse 6. John 3 and verse 6. You got a few more minutes here. Watch this. John 3, 6. John 3, verse 6. This is what Jesus said. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the what? Born of the Spirit. It didn't say born of your baptism, did it? It didn't say born of your good works, did it? Did it say born of how much of you tithing, did it? It didn't say born because your mama or your papa, somebody was in some kind of ministry, did it? It didn't say, it said born of the Spirit. It's a spiritual operation. Look how Jesus Christ puts it. Uh, again, verse 6, that which is born of the Spirit of Spirit, and that which is born of, uh, uh, born of the flesh, rather, is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit of Spirit. He says, uh, marvel not that I say ye must be born again. Now here's the illustration, watch. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Can you see the wind? No. But we can see the effects of the wind. Amen. 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 So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 9. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus said unto him, Art thou master of Israel and knowest not these things? See, here's the problem. You know what? People are still ignorant of how a person is really born again. They think somebody's born again because they ran down an aisle and jumped all around. They think some kind of people born, well, I know because I give money or I've been in church all my life. No, friend, let me tell you something. We was all born something, but you got to be born again. Amen. 
You got to be born again of the Spirit of God. Amen. It's a spiritual work that takes place in your heart, in your life, when Jesus, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Watch what the Bible says about the Spirit of God in this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse 13. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. First Corinthians 12, 13. Watch what it says now very carefully. Look what these verses say. For by one Spirit are we all what? Amen. Baptized into what? That's not, that's not physical. That's not your water baptism. That's a spiritual baptism, isn't it? He says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and all made to drink of one Spirit. Do you see that? It's a spiritual operation. It's not, that's why Nicodemus said, Can a man enter into his mother's womb and be born again? That's why Jesus said, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. We all had our fleshly birth. Amen. We all had our fleshly religion that we were born in. But guess what? You got, when we came to Jesus Christ, we got to find out we got to be born again. Amen. By the Spirit of God. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God baptizes you into the body of Jesus Christ. By one Spirit are we all baptized. Go to Ephesians. Now, rapid fire now. Go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 14. Look at this. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14. Well, Verse 13. Come back to verse 13. Ephesians 1 verse 13. And we'll read verse 13 and 14 together. Look what it says. Verse 13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the what? Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest. What is earnest? Down payment. Down payment. That's the money you put called earnest money which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession until the praise of his glory. But I want you to know, it says we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. See, you see what the Spirit of God does in your salvation? He seals you. Amen. He baptizes you in the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, good look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Same book. Ephesians 4, verse 30. Look what it says. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Y'all see the work of the Spirit of God in salvation? He's the one that baptizes you. He's the one that seals you. Not anything that you're doing. Amen. Look at this. Uh, um, 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22. That's the one he had to use tricks to get 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 1, 22 says, Who has sealed us and given, up, given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. You see it? This is what the Spirit of God does in the life in, 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 uh, 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 to convert you. He does all this stuff for you. You don't do it yourself. He does it for you. People are, are faking all this stuff. It, this bit of jumping around speaking in tongues, that's not what's outlined in the Bible. Look at this. Uh, go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Romans 8, verse 1. Now I go to my last point. Romans 8, 1. Look at this. Romans 8, 1. There is... Therefore, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. How did I get in there? Spirit of God put me in there. He says, who will walk not after the flesh, but after what? The Spirit. For the law, the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in His own Son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? Spirit! We're born of the Spirit! Amen! People spending all this time figuring, trying to Trying to fake it. 
and messing around. There's enough of the Bible where it says the Spirit of God will do. That's right. Amen. Now come back to our text. Come back to John chapter 16. And here's another last thing, the Spirit of God. Look what he said he'll do. Well, this is not a complete list, but this is just what he do is for concerning salvation. Look at verse 7 of John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go not away. For if I go not away, the what? What's he called? The comforter. See, the one that will convict you becomes the one that can convert you. Amen? Then he be, he's the one that comforts you. He's called the comforter. Amen? Comforter will not come on you, but if I depart, I will send him. In. Amen? He's called the comforter. Look at John 14 and verse 16. John 14 verse 16. Look at what Jesus said. John 14, 16, he says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Amen. See, he's the comforter. He's, when Jesus Christ said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you nor, he'll do it in the person of the Spirit of God. Amen. Look at verse 26, the same chapter. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's why the Bible says holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. See, he'll be your comforter. He'll guide you. We already read that. He'll gift you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about the gifts of the Spirit of God. He'll bear witness to the truth that you are a child of God. See, he will comfort you, amen? And you know what? It won't involve you running around here trying to speak in tongues. It won't, it won't involve you running around here trying to come up with some fake vision. It, you know, it, it's called peace in your heart, amen? That's how he'll comfort you. And the last thing the Holy Spirit will do is he'll, he will... Uh, Give you understanding this right here that you know what you need to do when you need to uh, believe on Lord Jesus Christ. It's your loss when you hear the message. How do I know that? Go to Hebrews chapter three before I close. Hebrews chapter three. Look what it says. Hebrews chapter three verse uh, verse seven. Hebrews chapter three verse seven. Hebrews three. Verse 7 says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the propagation in the day of wilderness. Uh, when the, your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, said they do always err in their heart and not know my ways, so I swear they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, therefore, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living uh, God, but exhort one another, uh, uh, another today, why does it call today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Amen. Look at verse uh, uh, 15. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. You're not supposed to harden your heart. You're supposed to hear it today. That's where the Holy Ghost... See, let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost will never tell you, tomorrow believe on Jesus Christ. He'll never say that. That's not the Spirit of God telling you that. The Holy Ghost will say, today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart. Amen? This is, a word, this, this is what the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost speaks, this is what He'll do because this is what the Bible says He'll do. Amen? Amen? All this other bunch of stuff that's floating around here is unscriptural. All this extra revelation outside the scriptures. Let me tell you something. The word of God is complete. Amen? I looked at my Bible. It says the end. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He said it is finished. And if there's anything else he need, we, uh, uh, we needed to know, he would have related to us in the word of God. Amen? And so, listen. When the Holy Ghost speaks... The way you find out what he's saying is you get your Bible and you see is what they are saying matching with what already is revealed in the scripture. And if it's not, then somebody's wrong. 
Amen. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. We'd be dismissed.